So this is what it says also in 1 Peter 2, 6 or 8, for it stands in Scripture. Why is he saying that? Because Isaiah had previously prophesied it. It stands in Scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to. Now, I'm just going to say something here. We all know the church can be really mean-spirited. And sometimes it can be embarrassing to say, yeah, I'm a Christian because of just the association of some of the harshness. Mm -hmm. But never be ashamed of Jesus. That's yes. right. Never be ashamed of our adamant, our, our prince, our flawless cornerstone. Do you know the cornerstone used to be so important that they would set it according to the stars? It was called the seed of a building. They would take so much care, the architects, to set it just perfectly because if the cornerstone is off, then the entire building becomes off. Wow. You have come to a perfect cornerstone. Yeah. And this is what our amazing, flawless Lord does. He takes each of us and he places us where our flaws are diminished mm -hmm. and our strength are enhanced so that together we can actually glorify him. People are going to fail us. People are going to fail to see us. But Jesus sees you, and he will not fail you. So we're going to honor him with everything for all of our days. So Isaiah 28, which is what Peter was quoting, he says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, Whoever believes in him shall not make haste. And I was like, what, do you, what does that even mean, not make haste? Like, don't run, don't move slow. It actually means to be at peace. It means to not be stressful, to be at peace. Again, we're going back to this pattern. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 4, Paul explained the rock of Exodus to the church of Corinth. It says, for they drank from that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. You know, I have a brilliant Messianic rabbi friend. And whenever I come into something like this, like, wait, people are drinking from a rock? And it <laughs> followed them. Wait, are you saying the rock moved? And he actually said that a lot of the rabbinical text says that the rock actually rolled behind them and would stop right by the temple. And it was set up where water would just come out of it. So he followed and then he refreshed. And he followed and he refreshed. And that's why Moses got so much trouble when he struck the rock, because he was supposed to only speak to it, because that rock was Christ. Wow. And so I want you to know, this isn't just some random thing that we just kind of pulled out there. There is a universe of opinions. There is rivers of lawlessness right now. And I'm just going to say this uh, as a mother and as a grandmother and as somebody who wants to honor Jesus with all of her life, you cannot build on what is fluid. Mm -hmm. You have to build on what is solid. Right. And Jesus is that cornerstone. And I want you to understand that no matter what wilderness you are in right now, he's aware. He's following you. He is willing to be your refreshing. I don't care how dry that desert looks. There is not a river around you everywhere right. you look, but there is a river within you. And you need to draw on that well. This book is set up for you to establish yourself in what it means to be in Christ and in his truth. Truth is a rock, not a river. Let's build our lives with strength yeah. and with grace. In Jesus' name.